Greetings, Earthlings. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Sumit Chatterjee from the Flow Zone Academy, and I'm a flow state specialist, so I help you feel your best and perform your best. So I believe, uh, Avinanda, you were asking around how to actually do this Hakalau process. So to start out today's video on synchronicities, I thought we would do a little bit of a drop-in, a little bit of a guided meditation together to give you an understanding of how to do this Hakalau method, okay? So, get somewhere where you can be very relaxed and see if you can slowly kind of just relax your body. Shoulders down, good. Now I want you to pick a spot right in front of you. So maybe you're watching this on a laptop or a phone, you can keep it somewhere. But just listen to my words. Just look right in front of you and keep staring at a point, a focal point. This could be the center of some kind of a symbol, a mandala, just a random point in the room that you decide upon. Good. Now, using your single pointed focus, your dharana, I want you to create more so a soft focus. See if you can make your gaze slightly softer and n not use not use so much intensity and effort to try to zoom in, okay? This is what we're really working towards, is removing the excess tension, the excess effort that we have to give on this process, okay? So sort of have a diffuse vision, if that makes sense. Good. Now slowly but surely, start to pay attention to what is around you, so your panoramic vision. As you keep looking at the focal point, you get an open perception or an open awareness, as I like to call it, okay? So it'll be like really opening up for you. Palms gently just on your lap if you're sitting on a seat. You can cross your legs if you're on the floor. It's an open-eyed meditation, okay? Now, this is my own addition to it. Now, you can find a lot of other Hakala meditations out there, but this is Primal Sutra's art form, okay? This is what I'm teaching on my channel. This is my art and science. So, I want you to actually introduce the concepts as you do this practice. Number one from Advaita Vedanta, okay? Non-dual, that's all it means, non-dualism, okay? And the other side, from Taoism, I want you, as you're doing this practice, to maintain a slight smirk, a slight smile. This slight smile meditation will raise your vibration. It'll maintain that higher vibration. I mean, trust me, try it, just try it. Okay. As you have a slight smile, you'll notice your body relaxing even more, getting even more effortless, you see? You can, if it helps, kind of put your arms out like this and wiggle your fingers, okay? So you can see your fingers on the side too. So now when it feels like it's the right time, as you're doing this open-eyed meditation, and you're aware of the space around you, maybe you're aware of the ceiling, you're aware of what's at the left of you and at the right of you. You just know your space. Just explore and know your space, and just understand that you can create this soft panoramic gaze. I mean, the way to understand Hakala very simply is that it is just simply your peripheral vision, okay? But from this, we are also maintaining a vibration, so we're not staying in that suffering anymore. You see? We've capped it at a certain point of consciousness. That little smile, that facial feedback hypothesis will start to generate in a, bit a good feeling too. Good. And now when you're ready, you can close your eyes. And just kind of feel the peace emanate around you. 
like feel your actual physical body, but then also feel the space that you were just looking at seconds before you closed your eyes now. And get that feeling of spaciousness, even when you don't have the gift of vision guiding you anymore. You have the gift of your mind's eye guiding you now. And your mind will do what it needs to do. Don't worry about what the thoughts are saying, what the emotions are saying, just be present. Good. Okay, I think we're very dropped in right now. Okay, let's start talking about synchronicities because I've been sensing so many synchronicities recently that it's a little bit scary. Every single thing in my subconscious mind, in my metaphysical world, is slowly starting to piece together and it's starting to make sense. We use the word senses, correct? We've got to use our senses. We can't use our emotions and we can't use our thoughts. We've got to use something called our higher instinct, okay? Instinct is usually used for survival, but this is a process of survival in spirit, survival in spirit. That is what is happening through this 3D incarnation. Synchronicities are just a way that you track the progress of your spiritual discipline, okay? Or discipline coming from disciple, okay? This is why living a life that is devoted to something greater than you is going to help you to transcend or connect with this contribution abstraction, okay? which is what our purpose is, okay? Essentially, the, the higher up we are in our state of consciousness, the more connected to our purpose we are, okay? So the crown chakra is more so associated with purpose and topics like this, okay? So from that, if you're familiar with the Robert Diltz model, he's showing that there's ego on one side and soul on the other side, and that is the journey that we must climb to get to the top of the pyramid, okay? Now, what happens in life is we become lopsided, okay? We put too much attention on one side of the duality and then we miss out on all the beauty that is already present there on the, on the other side of the, that duality, you see? So everything is playing its part, okay? Everybody is playing their role correctly in this, okay? You gotta understand what your role is though, you see? And that will be revealed to you. You don't need to know that. This is designed in such a way, this universe, that that will be revealed to you. How do I know that? I just know that. As you continue meditating, as you continue going down the spiritual path working, you're gonna realize that, that true authenticity. So in order for you to track your progress, you're gonna have to pay attention to the frequency of synchronicities that you receive. The next thing is you want to bridge your higher self with your subconscious mind, okay? Now, the way you do this is by understanding that there is a connection to something higher. And it's like a beam from the top of your head going up like this, right? And um, as I'm doing more practices, so we have this process right now, and I'm a part of uh, this camp, it's invitation only, okay? So if you wanna get invited to that, you know, uh, first of all, you have to be a part of the collective of the tribe. So uh, not everyone gets access to these teachings. However, it's called the chosen. Okay. So anyway, back to the topic at hand. What if you multiply yourself based on your universe? So I titled this video, The Universe is just the you inverse. Okay. As within, so without, as above, so below, right? So what you're experiencing internally, you will see outside on the universe. If you feel that this universe is a cruel one, you'll start to experience that more. Understand this, Satan just means the one that opposes. The ops, okay? Right? You have some ops out there, right? The, yeah, I call the shots. Don't care for the ops. 21, 21, okay? Or whatever. So, <laughs> um, you gotta be a lover of learning, a philomath, okay? That's what a lover of learning is. It's not a lover of math, okay? I don't think I'll ever be a lover of math in that sense of how school taught it, but I will be a lover of geometry, gematria, okay?
okay? Logic, probability, my own understanding of mathematics, not how it was taught to me. You get that? And then you make sure that the curve of the parabola is, when am I gonna use that in my real life? I know when I'm gonna use gematria, which is equated to gene keys, if you're unfamiliar with gene keys, by the way, highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. Even if you're not into astrology or anything like that, just look at it, just try it out, and then give me an opinion. Okay? I don't care if you have an opinion about that. Oh, yeah, but this, uh, how does he know all these things? And oh, how? Confirm it with your own experience. Don't read what some random sadhu is telling you and just believing that as the truth and nothing but the truth. We don't want to worship any idols in this game. You see, the higher self is working independent of time already. You know why? It has perspective of your past, your future, and your now. Your past timelines, your future timelines, and your now timeline. For it, it's just now, but it knows. I think each of us connects to a certain type of deification or a version of our higher selves that connects us to a particular pantheon or path working. Now, a lot of you, you face synchronicities watching these videos, correct? As you're listening, that is another confirmation from the universe, right? Because how on earth could something make sense as I'm speaking it out in this part of the world, wherever you are? Maybe you are in this part of the world and we, you know, we met in person as well. So time is just an encryption layer, okay? Between 4D and 5D. And it is from the turning of judgment into love, okay? How did I, how, what's an example of this, okay? I posted that uh, picture with me and two girls, right? On both sides. And because I, my, my skin looks so good, right? This guy comments and out of jealousy or whatever, okay? This guy's some random schlub, I don't even know him, okay? He goes, nice makeup, bro. You look so pretty or whatever, right? I said, nah, man, I was just born sexy, okay? Now I turned his judgment into love, love for myself, you see? And that's the beautiful thing. When I say love, it transcends. Love transcends all, right? So when I say love, don't think, uh, I mean, okay, you watching a romantic comedy, eating a bucket of haagen okay? That's not what I'm talking about when I'm talking about love. I'm talking about the interconnectedness and the unity between all things. Now this is a higher perspective of love, okay? Let's not romanticize love, right? Ooh, thank you for that lightning. The budger coming through. And if you just focus on truth without focusing on the love, you'll carry this strange moralistic dilemma where you feel that the truth will subconsciously or unconsciously benefit you. Because effectiveness is the best measure of truth according to my principles, okay? And my understanding of all of this. Like if it's giving you greater results and you're feeling happier and more light, more inner peace, you're doing something right, okay? So great, okay? Now if you're creating more suffering, more toxicity, now if you're creating more suffering, more toxicity, more chains in your own communication with how you're doing things and you're constantly being you know, put into a box or judged right away, you can't grow, you can't expand in that community, right? The way we enjoy music with our ears, geometry is the same thing, but it's music for the eyes. So this Akashic Records, okay, so what the Akashic Records essentially is, is the way I'd simplify it. It's almost like a cloud storage, okay? That's the way I want you to think about it. It's like a cloud storage of all your motion states and emotion states, okay? Emotions, just energy in motion. So it's just basically picking up your energy patterns, okay, your signature energy patterns. And it knows your signature energy patterns from the past and the future. That's why when we say remember, remember who you are, right? Remember who you are from all of those past timelines, okay? It's a knowingness, it's an internal certainty. And God or the creator knows you. It knows all of you, there's no hiding, okay? That relaxes you even further. That's what relaxed me. Man, the blood drill makes me feel so good. That lightning, that lightning spark, bro. Boom, I'm back. It's like I'm online. There's a bioelectricity already available internally for you. Get that? 
So the lightning that you hear is actually a reminder of the lightning that sometimes happens internally. Okay, where your energy starts to spark up. Okay, the lights of that higher awareness, that higher consciousness. This might be a very, very controversial topic, but the word trauma, you know, sometimes implies that you're not a master of your life, that you're a victim of your life, correct? We've all been through traumas, okay? Minor traumas and different things like that. I understand that too. The thing about it is, man, the hammer always searches for a nail, right? So the victim is continuously going to get victimized. It is until they change their paradigm and they realize, no, you know what? I do have a choice. I do have power. And that's the masculine form of healing, remember, is that perception change. The feminine form of healing is release, letting go, letting go, letting go. So if you feel like a victim, you'll keep being victimized. If you feel like a loser, you'll find yourself in more loser-like situations. What if you embodied and tapped into the energy of your higher self? What if you knew it was just there? What if you knew that it was just there watching your every move and knowing all your nonsense and storylines and conditioning and, you know, strange patterns and stuff we've added on top of that? If you feel powerful, the trauma could become a source of empowerment for you. The universe is the inverse you, the you inverse. Everything that you're experiencing internally, you're gonna be experiencing externally. And I know this throughout my own life. It's very true. But what if I feel like I'm at a really good place internally? Things will shift, shift like that instantaneously. Why, because I'm at a higher vibration, okay? And that's what everyone's trying to do. They're trying to get to inner peace. They're trying to get to this inner wisdom, the light of knowing, the light of pure being. And they're trying to do it through so many different ways, okay? Let me join the rat race. Let me do this this way. Let me flex all this material wealth, right? All my cars. All of that is temporary, my friend. It's you with you. This is between you and your Holy Father. You know what? I love how it's raining right now and it's ending on this. My most powerful videos have been the rain ones. You guys know it, right? You've seen this channel for a while. You know what I'm talking about, okay? Thank you so much. I also work with different water deities and water spirits, so this is another confirmation from them to me. Shoutouts King Nixa. Shoutouts Varuna. Shoutouts Poseidon or King Neptune. Shoutouts Dragon King Longway. Shout out all the thunder gods, the Hayoka gods. And the beauty of it, it's all coming from one source. You see? The kingdom of heaven is within. Now maybe you watch this video and you experience a little bit of trippiness, a little bit of Satori happening, a little bit of like, whoa. What is this? Like, whoa, let me get back to my regular nine to five. Like I just spent time kind of zoning out to this video that's completely valid okay because if you want to control your age you want to look younger you have to remind yourself that you are timeless what is your relationship to time you see i see time as a beautiful thing so i'm going to be getting more and more beautiful i see aging as a beautiful thing and i'm going to age like fine wine i know that i know i'm a timeless being if my body wrinkles up or I get a, you know, sore or maybe I get my finger chopped off or maybe I get, you know, a tiny little mole here that kind of spreads on my arm or if I get another tattoo here or whatever it is, right? I'm still this spirit. That's the thing. I'm just playing in the matter realm. Does that even matter? You know what the word matter means? It means mother. Mater, right? Materia, substance. Hey, there might be a spiritual reason why women need to love themselves and, and look so much towards their own appearance, right? Because men can love, you know? But they've just forgotten how to. So this is a reunification. You see what I'm saying? Some of you are really getting this, right? You guys are like, mm, mm, because... We share a collective unconscious, you see? You've been having some of these thoughts and downloads yourself and you're seeing more and more synchronicities 
and it's no wonder that this channel found you this youtube channel right and this channel earth right all right guys i'm gonna end it here because we have a lot of projects for primal sutra we have a curriculum that we're creating for the adepts program so if you are interested in that definitely shoot me a message it's only 99 dollars a month bro if you can't afford that i'm sorry bro you know that's the best i can do at this time matches on today's five day challenge is over it was epic absolutely epic if you want that video course uh each day i can shoot one video over to your email as you practice the challenges okay so that's the way i'm gonna do it the person who purchases it i'm gonna take you through the videos each day and then you know eventually you're gonna evolve by day five i know i've evolved because i already have three or four dates from this whole process from doing that event for five days I now have five dates with five new women, okay? So that's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. And you want to start to understand that this process works. Whatever is happening, I'm getting out of my own way and letting this Primal Sutra path working do its thing. Allowing a source to live through me and give as much value as I can, okay, in the best way that I can. So let's get it today, Albert Sparrow. May we never be the same again. Hit that like and subscribe button, you already know. We're all gonna make it. Let's go. Os.